Hello and welcome to part 2 of our Highlander set review for Commander Legends. In this video we'll cover the black, red, and green cards we think have a home in Canadian Highlander. Before we get started, let me remind you of the rating scale. A's are a slam dunk, playable in multiple decks and archetypes, B's are playable in some archetypes but might not be an all-star in any of them, and C's are playable when you need an additional copy of an existing effect. We left off at black, so our first black card is uh, Court of Ambition. It's the third court that we're looking at today in the court cycle. Uh, so for four mana, two and two black, you get a uh, court that enters the battlefield and you become the monarch. Uh, and at the beginning of your upkeep, each opponent loses three life unless they discard a card. And if you're the monarch, they instead, uh, or if you're the monarch, instead each opponent loses six life unless they discard two cards. Yeah, I'm not uh, blown out of the water. I think this is just like another Punisher card where it's just like, they get to choose what's best for them. Like mm -hmm. if you're not pressuring their life total, they get to just lose life and be happy about it. And then if it's not great to me. As a purveyor of big black, Jordan, does this go in big black? It's a uh, custody lich is the, is the best monarch card for big black. I think. In Canlander, if like, if like a Punisher style deck is like what you really want to do, I think this is a fine card for that. I, I, I still think it is just a little bit too slow when compared to like the other four drops you're trying to cast in any sort of control shell. And like, if you're trying to be like accelerant, you're playing this on like one of the turns where you want to be accelerating and that just messes up your game plan a lot. For me, it's a C. I think it's a C. Yeah, I'm gonna give it like a C minus, maybe a D. It's yeah. just, it's cool. It's it's just it's just not my thing. I I'm also in the C minus camp. I think. All right, let's move on. Our next card is Elvish Doomsayer. Now you might recognize this card, or, or rather you might recognize its opposite. So Elvish Doomsayer is a two mana one one elf shaman. Uh, with when Elvish Doomsayer dies, each opponent discards a card. Um, so this is the sort of twisted reflection, if you will, of Elvish Visionary, which enters the battlefield and draws you a card in green for the same mana cost, has the same stats exactly. I uh, I don't know. Like I I think Elvish Visionary is good because it draws a card and it sort of fits into the Elf Ball like archetype. I I'm not exactly sure where this wants to be. And like I, I probably not in the elf ball decks, but like maybe in the decks that play like that, um, that black green elf that like drains you for all the, all the elves you have, or like drains your opponent. Yeah, shaman of the pack. That's the one. Yeah. So maybe maybe in something like that where you're you're just like playing elves that do stuff and then like win the game by draining them. I'm not I'm not sure. Even then though, like um. The fact that it is a death trigger and not ETB makes me really not like this. And, and that's like, true. And like, it could have been a uh, plague rats or something. Or no, that's not right. The burglar rat, yeah. Burglar rat, yeah. And like, and like, and like, I would always say that like this would be a strictly better burglar rat if it did that. Just, just on the premise that it's an elf. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm also putting this at about a, a C. I'm going as low as a D. I just, I just don't think it does enough. I'd, I'd give it like a, a C plus. I think it's playable in some sort of deck, just not everyone. Next up, we have a contender for best art in the set. Uh, and that is Feast of Succession. So four and two black for a sorcery that says all creatures get minus four, minus four uh, until end of turn and you become the monarch. So it's a languish that gives you the monarch, basically. I really wish that this was a five drop. Playability-wise, I I'm, I do think it's probably like, like insane at five mana and just not quite good enough at six. I, I think like this is probably my favorite card in the set. I, uh, I, I saw this and I think it's just sweet. I think even in like in a singleton competitive like in highlander or whatever i th i think there's a lot of value to be had in a not a wrath but like a soft board wipe that makes you the monarch like it it resets the board in most cases 
and then sets you up to draw cards which is where like everything blue black control or something wants to do so like i i think there's a lot a lot to be had here and i think it's like one of the better cards in the set not not amazing at six mana but i think it's one of the better ones all right so what's your letter grade for it oh i'm in a i'm in a solid b plus a minus position here the jordan's words have swayed me a little bit i think i think i'm i'm, I'm pretty content to give this like a b minus yeah it's a black card so i'm gonna give it a b <laughs> that's how it's gonna that's how it's gonna be it's a lot of b's okay <laughs> moving on to the next card so julian you included this one it's seven mana six and a black for a sorcery that says each player sacrifices six creatures you create six tapped two two black zombie creature tokens okay so this so, is uh evolution of hex right which says destroy six target creatures each player doesn't have to have six creatures for you to cast this and that's really interesting this is a wrath that also puts 12 power on board for you yes, that's right and nobody else so it's kind of like rise from the tides mixed with like any board wipe, yeah. I'm not convinced this card is like amazing yet because it is a, a seven mana, and that on its own is a flavor fail because hex is also six, and this is not six. But in German, this is still a hex arrive though. So, oh, you're right, you're right. My bad. <laughs> um, but but I can't help but feel like people are, are going to sleep on this card. And and I understand it's probably not the best, but like I I I can see a world where this card just like bodies things like Carnage Tyrant and Thrun, and just completely flips the board in the control player's favor. I can't help but feel like something is here. I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a C. I think seven I, mana is a lot. Yeah. I, I'm going to go with like a B minus. I think there's a deck that wants this, but uh, not not every deck. I think I think the rock actually like really. Yeah. Well, like yeah. you it's just, it's just certainly going rock. You don't have to choose between like wrathing the board and making a bunch of dudes that'll just kill somebody. You get to do both. That's fair. But yeah. All right. Let's move on to the next card. So this is probably one of, if not my favorite, arts in the set. I know we just talked about uh, Feast of Succession, but Nightshade Harvester is definitely up there too. So Nightshade Harvester is three and a black for a 2-2 Elf Shaman with whenever a land enters the battlefield under an opponent's control, that player loses one life and you put a 1-1 counter on Nightshade Harvester. I, th I think you could play this probably in like one of those like four color land-based like mid-range decks where you're like, ghost quartering or um uh field of ruining your opponent like a bunch because then like there's like an actual cost for them to like search for these lands and put them into play fetch lands do become real with this card though too yeah yeah i think you really want this out on the board on like turn three at the latest yeah yeah i think so too because at turn four they're like once you have four lands you can do most things Right, especially in in Canadian Highlander, which is a format whose mana curve gets pushed down every year, lower and lower. So, you know, you sort of disincentivize your opponent to play lands, but it's less it's less of a punishment and more of a disincentive, I think. So, I don't know. I, I think this is a a B minus. I agree with you. I'm closer to like C plus myself, but like B minus is fine. I can accept that. Let's move along. So with that B minus, it puts us to <laughs> probably the first like A plus slash like honor roll slash Nobel Prize. <laughs> we had Hull Breacher already. We had Hull Breacher already. That's true. I love this card. Jordan, I... you want to introduce this, this mistake of a magic card? For sure. So our next one is opposite opposition agent. It's a uh, three two human rogue for two and a black, and it's got flash. The next ability is you control your opponents while they're searching their libraries, and while an opponent is searching their library, they exile each card they find. 
you may play those cards for as long as they remain exiled and you may spend mana as though it were mana of any color to cast them so so let me get this straight your opponent cracks a fetch land they crack a scalding tarn just to be specific about it and you flash this in and you get to look through their library at all the lands that might you know be found with a a scalding tarn yeah and exile their steam vents and then you can play their steam vents yep yeah that, okay. that seems kind of dumb hear me out okay mystic sanctuary you get to steal their mystic sanctuary you know like what um would be the most obnoxious thing in the world is is um casting this in response to an opponent's doomsday <laughs> yeah because then you just choose like five lands and you're like okay yeah and, it, okay. and it's, it's just gone you just exile their deck mm -hmm. is this the most likely card from the set to get pointed oh yeah 100 percent. i think by far yeah no question about that i think i think i, I think this card just like just like shatters so much that can lander wants to do as and like the fact that you can find it off of uh, Recruiter of the Guard, if you're playing like an oh, Orzhov yeah. base deck, or even like an Esper deck, you're just like, huh, just like, Recruiter for this, and then as soon as they do anything, you're just like, Opposition Agent. And the fact that like it, it, it dies to shock is not enough to, to stop people from playing this card. And like... Man, this is actually like a total nightmare, again, with like Ghost Quarter and like Field of Ruin. Yeah, no, exactly. and escape shift. Oh, you're, you're, God. you're just getting like strip mined, and then they get to exile a land from your deck instead, and then and then play it. It turns your ghost quarter into like a tune with ether plus strip mine. Yeah, that's ridiculous. <laughs> like, oh yeah, and field of ruin will do the same thing. Yeah, exactly. Like it's it's insane. Begrudgingly, I give this an A plus. A plus. Yeah, it's just too objectively good. Okay, let's move on to Plague Reaver. Plague Reaver is a 6-5 uh, beast for two and a black that says, at the beginning of your end step, sacrifice each other creature you control. Discard two cards, sacrifice Plague Reaver, choose target opponent, return Plague Reaver to the battlefield under that player's control at the beginning of the next upkeep. I, where I see this is in like the mono black aggro or like the black green aggro decks where like you get to play this on like turn one or two with like a mana crypt or a mox or whatever and like just like crush them in the head for six damage and That's like too. and just like go aggro with it yeah and then you're not like overextending into a wrath or something um and then if their board gets too big for one guy to get through then you you discard some cards you sack it you let them have it and then you can play all your little like two one aggro guys and then go wide around it because those decks have a bunch of guys like um uh, like blood soaks champion and like grave crawler that will just get themselves back anyway and then then you're just going wide around this and they can't really stop it I think so, it's like, just like a B. I yeah, like that's where I'd put it. Like, yeah, um, I think you got a B too. I think it's fine. I think I, I think it'll do the aggro job super well. I think it's a very very powerful card, and just I'm ready to get cracked in the head for six by this thing, and then lose my board to it. <laughs> you know what's gonna happen. Oh yeah. All right, next up, we've got Tormod the Desecrator. Tormod the Desecrator is a uh, four mana, four two, um, for three and a black. That says, whenever one or more cards leave your graveyard, create a tapped two two black zombie creature token. Probably one of the best decks that like can really hinge on this was maybe like that like, Grixis Delve deck that plays like all the Delve creatures and like, it still plays like Treasure Cruise, Dig Through Time. Mm -hmm. And like murderous cut and then like if you if you get to treasure cruise make what six two two zombies no it's one or more the... so you get you only oh, get one i see yeah well still it's not too too bad make a body and draw three cards for one man that seems pretty good like yeah <laughs> i see this going really really well in any deck that plays a scavenging use because each time you activate scoozy the two two yeah exactly yeah. 
yeah that's 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 very very strong um i really like to that um but this also triggers off of like a snapcaster mage or a baby jace there's there's a lot of value to be gained out of this card i think this is this is a totally totally a real card so our first red card is uh, so Corrosive Recruiter is uh, five mana for a four three orc pirate that says whenever Corrosive Recruiter, Corrosive Recruiter or another pirate enters the battlefield under your control, gain control of target creature until end of turn. Untap that creature until end of turn. It gains haste and becomes a pirate in addition to its other types. If you're playing this with uh, Splendor Twin, if if you play this this on the same turn, it can give itself haste. And then yeah. you can put Splinter Twin on it and then go off that way. All right. I think it's like a B. Like you want it in a deck that wants to combo with it, but you wouldn't play it otherwise. I'd go with a B plus, I think. Like I think it's almost as good as I I'd yeah. Roundabout zealous, zealous conscripts. I might play one over the other. I'm not sure yet. Okay. Next, we have Court of Ire. Court of Ire is the most expensive court at five mana. It's three and two red uh, for an enchantment that says whenever or when Court of Ire enters the battlefield, you become the monarch. And at the beginning of your upkeep, Court of Ire deals two damage to any target. But if you're the monarch, you deal seven damage to the, that target instead, that player or permanent instead. Um, I don't know what deck wants this. I don't know what red deck wants this. Red Prison really really enjoys this card i Maybe. think does does something like medium red want something like this i don't think medium red does it it sort of yeah. leverages like five mana haste creatures i think big red might play this like if if you have this on the field and then you get to like wildfire they're toast <laughs> that's disgusting <laughs> toast yeah i really like that this card can like kill creatures and planeswalkers and yeah anybody. yeah basically it's like ridiculous. like i really enjoy that like this draws a card and then becomes removal later like i'm not sure this is like a, a control card per se but it seems like a very nice like like um like a dedicated prison card yeah um i like that like it controls the board it can shoot people dead it can shoot their permanents dead like it does it does a lot very slowly i really wish that like that like it was like an end step trigger and not like an upkeep trigger upkeep because like I, at that point this like becomes a a removal spell as well yeah um i don't know that i trust that it will be able to remove a thing before the monarch is taken and that's where like i'm like a little less a sold on it mm -hmm. i think it's a b i'll give it a b i think that's it's been a lot of b's fair. but that's yeah that's a b I too. Agree. all right let's move on to our next card uh next we have ember wild captain which also grants the monarchy so ember wild captain is a four mana gin pirate that says whenever Ember Wild Captain enters the battlefield, he becomes the monarch. Uh, and whenever an opponent attacks you while you are the monarch, Ember Wild Captain deals damage to that player equal to the number of cards in their hand. Okay, I actually think this card is insanely powerful. Yeah, I agree with you there. Like, I, like having a having a downside to trying to take the monarch back is is like pretty devastating. It like, really is. I just like I just want to suit this up with like a sort of war and peace and just like nuke people for their hand like oh, uh, that sounds so cool <laughs> just all the time play monstrous like a, a starburst dragon in the mix too just for the music. yeah <laughs> well you probably play that in the same deck anyway probably yeah it's so, like this is probably good medium red like yeah i think so just like a bunch of hasty creatures that are like actively you know like going after your life total and then you're like okay i'm drawing an extra card every turn and if you want to take it back you got to take four just to try yeah exactly and then and then they fail and they're like oh no <laughs> yeah yeah this is probably an a minus i agree i'll give it an a minus i think this is sweet all right next we've got um 
a bit of a meme, I think. Uh, oh. It's Clark the Thumbless. <laughs> I don't, <laughs> don't, Jordan, I don't you put this on the meme. list. I so think this, you, t- you talk about it. <laughs> I think this card's actually good. I, th- I think you just play this in mono red. Like, really? Yeah, like if, like if you spend one mana to cast a bolt and it gets put back in your hand, you're like not really upset. But if you if you spend a mana and you get to double bolt, I think you're fine. Yeah, that's messed up. Actually, I like that right. a lot. All right. Or like like it ha- it works with everything. Like all your like chain lightnings, they're either six or you get to cast them again. Okay. And like sure, <laughs> but it what doesn't. If, but what if you get snubbed both times? Unlucky. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm no mathematician, but it, it's 50-50. So, like, I, I think half the time, yeah. And, like, the odd time, this is going to ruin you, but, like... <laughs> so this is either an F or an A, basically, is what yeah, you're saying. Yeah, I, I think this is, like, a slam dunk in mono red, but... Like, I think, I think it gets a lot worse the more expensive spells you're trying to catch yeah to cast yeah but if you're um casting but all like, chief spells yeah exactly like if if your shock is like a boros charm where you get your shock back yeah especially like if you like i guess it could really backfire if you're trying to like fire blast or something but it could also just <laughs> eight people out of nowhere it's true that's true <laughs> like like you have no mana untapped and they're like okay I try to kill you and you're like well I'm, i guess i'm losing if i don't cast this anyway eight you and they just die like it's... imagine casting like <laughs> like 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 a price of progress off of this oh no like you either win the game or they or like or you have another chance you, to win the game or you just basically. get to cast it again yeah. yeah double or nothing that's what it says exactly i i think this card is amazing like a plus like every red deck all right every I'm, mono red deck. you've convinced me i'm gonna give it an a2 i don't like it i'm never gonna cast it but it, it's 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 very powerful i'll, I'll give it an be, a2 i'm gonna be casting some cracks all right next up we've got port razor port razor is another orc pirate that says whenever port razor port razor deals combat damage to a player untap each creature you control and after this combat phase there is an additional combat phase and port razor can't attack player it has already attacked this turn so in a singleton format that is 1v1 uh port razor will only give you one additional combat step yeah. um i think this is okay i think if you're a deck that really wants to attack multiple times then then this is fine but for five mana and it not having hastes yeah i think i think haste is like the one word that this card needed to be really good I'm not sure. Like I know, I know it's like sort of a meme that like Kiki Jiki combos with a potato, but like it's true. He also combos with this guy. You make a copy, attack, untap all your dudes. Then you get to make another copy and attack and untap all your dudes. Yeah, that's just that's just how it is. Like um, like I can't imagine if you're like already um. Like I'm making your five drop slots dense with like the new pirate, the other pirate, um, and conscripts and Kiki Jiki itself. I don't think you're like playing this too. Like, it, like maybe I don't know. Like, it's probably like a C. I'll give it a C. I'm not super high on it, but yeah, it might I'm get like there sometimes. Okay, B minus. All right, that brings us to our last red card, which is Wheel of Misfortune. Wheel of Misfortune. Two and a red gets you a sorcery. Each player secretly chooses a number zero or greater. Then all players reveal those numbers simultaneously and determine the highest and lowest numbers revealed this way. It's wordy. Wheel of Misfortune deals damage equal to the highest number to each player who chose that number. Each player who didn't choose the lowest number discards their hand, then draws seven cards. Okay, I I put this on the list, and I think this is like the sweetest, like after Clark, the sweetest mono red card we've gotten in a long time. Like 
if you're mono red, like burn or aggro, you're usually pressuring their life total and they're not pressuring yours. So I think you could play this card and just be like 10. And they're like, <laughs> they either are taking like more than 10 damage or you get to draw seven. This is insane. Yeah, I, I, I do think unlike Wheel of Fortune, this is like a slam dunk, just, just like aggressive red card. And I, I'm here for that. I think, I think this card is stupid, but not in the same sense that like a wheel of fortune is i think i think this just does a very aggressive thing very very well um i also feel like like this card is a Yu-Gi-Oh card secretly oh definitely yeah. it feels like goblin game i get the vibe of a Yu-Gi-Oh card and just everything that this card does and and the paragraph that that tells you what it does but no, I think I think this is like a slam dunk mono red card for absolute certain. Yeah, a a plus for me. Yeah, I'll I'll be right there with an A too. I'll give it an A. Yeah, it's just nuts. All right, with our last red card that brings us to green. <laughs> We're starting with uh, the biggest, baddest, greenest card in the set. It has four <laughs> four. Uh, words of rules text and 56 words of reminder text and that's apex devastator for 10 mana you get a chimera hydra uh with 10 power and 10 toughness that has cascade 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 jordan why'd you add this to the list okay i think this is like the biggest dumb in all history like it's like okay you thought you thought questing beast had a lot of words on it and i i just saw this and i was like this isn't like the best card i've ever seen but i just had that like marge simpson moment like where she's looking at the, the potato she's like you i think just it's think neat. it's neat <laughs> 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 so, but like i don't know like i want to play this in something like I, what do you want to cascade into off like anything I, I don't anything. think it matters. Like, yeah, I don't think it matters either. You're getting five spells for the price of one. Yeah. Ideally, you cascade into something that gives this thing haste and trample. But like, I don't, I don't even think it matters. This has like built-in like counter protection almost. Yeah, you get four other spells. Unless they have five counter spells, which seems unlikely. Like you just you're gonna resolve something. Yeah. I don't know. Like, what what decks are you looking to play this in? So like yeah, probably just like straight up ramp, and then like you get to cascade, and you're like you'll probably hit some rampant growths, but you'll also probably hit like a Rurikthar or like an Atarka. Julian, as a control player, is this thing your worst nightmare? As a control player, I I I don't think I want you to get to ten mana, but um, <laughs> I, I think if they're playing ramp, you don't really have a choice. <laughs> but it's true. I, I um. This is absolutely a thing that I don't want to see my opponent ramp into. The kind of card that makes control players like myself very uncomfortable. The fact that like I, I don't know what's coming off of it is one of the scariest things about it. <laughs> well, you get to see them first before you counter the Hydra. <laughs> I know. I don't know how 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 you beat this thing once it goes on the stack. It's you, you got to keep them off it. Wrath or die. Wrath or die. Like, or yikes. just die if they have a haste enabler. Yeah. Yeah. Like, um, yeah. I, I, I don't know what I can say about this card really that hasn't already been said, but like, it's a yikes. Realistically, there's probably better things you're doing for 10 mana, but at the same time, like, this could probably find the better 10 mana things. Yeah. I'm on a, like an A minus. Like, I think this is maybe not the best thing at 10, but it's pretty close. Yeah, like it's, if it if it really came down close. to things you could cast for ten mana, and you have like Ulamog, the Ceaseless Hunger, and this thing, I think I'd actually prefer to cast this thing. I think this card is just bonkers. I think it's a A minus B plus territory. Yeah. yeah, I would agree with you. This card just makes me very uncomfortable to be alive. <laughs> you won't be alive for much longer if they resolve it. Oh no! Oh no! It's all the right. end times. It's the end times. Uh, all right. Uh, so we've come to our final court. Uh, it's the Court of Bounty. It's 
two and two green for an enchantment. When Court of Bounty enters the battlefield, you become the monarch. And at the beginning of your upkeep, you may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield. But if you're the monarch, you may instead put a creature card or a land card from your hand onto the battlefield. It is a very similar to Piper, and, and it gives you the monarch, which is not nothing. <laughs> mm-hmm. What decks are you looking to play this in? I th- I think you like you just get to play this in like like a lot of green decks like maybe not all of them but like I think any one where you're just like playing a Sylvan Caryatid and then you get to play this on turn three you're like you're the monarch you have a blocker and you're like putting lands or just dumping creatures into play every turn you use this as like green show and tell where you just play this and you you just want to put like the biggest dumbs into play I think this is an A I don't know about an A. I, I, I do think it is it is a, a little bit slow to be like A territory for me, but like I would, I'd be pretty comfortable giving it a B. Yeah, I'm in like a B plus. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's move on to our next card. <laughs> for six and two green, you get a five, five legendary human druid. At the beginning of combat on your turn, creatures you control get plus three, plus three and gain trample till the end of the turn. And for one and a green, until the end of the turn, target land you control becomes a 1-1 elemental creature with vigilance, indestructible, and haste. It's still a land. And it incidentally has partner. I think this is like about as close to like a hoof analog as you're going to get. Like when I play hoof, I don't play um, Endray's Forerunners and um, the Eldrazi one. Yeah, because the Eldrazi big one board, only works on pig. cast. Yeah, the Eldrazi one only works on cast. Yeah, I think if like if you have already like if your hoof's been thought seized or milled or whatever, you can still natural order for this guy with like a few elves out and still kill them. Yeah, in the power ranking, if you will, of different uh, crater hoofs, I think this is this is probably second in command. So it goes like OG hoof, Kamal Heart of Krosa, and then you know, a, a random smattering of, like, uh, Big Pig and then uh, and raise Forerunners. Yeah, I'd, I'd probably play Forerunners for because they're Enter the Battlefield ability, right? Yeah. yeah. It, no, no, it's, is it Enter the Battlefield or every turn? No, it gets plus two, plus two, and they have Haste and Vigilance and Trample. And Trample as well, yeah. Yeah, something like that. And they cost seven mana when this costs eight? Uh, no, end raise is eight. Five, green, green, green. Yeah. Okay, so it's uh, it's eight as well. So they're all kind of riding that eight mana line, but for for the eight mana that you want to invest in this, if you're not natural ordering it into play, yeah. I think giving all of your creatures plus three, plus three, every turn plus Trample is just banana sandwich. This is crazy. Yeah, and if you've got like one Gaia's Cradle in play and then you can make like three lands into like four fours with Trample and Vigilance and Indestruct like this is insane you you put this at a B originally but I think I'm going to give it an A this Uh, card is one of the ones I'm most excited for in this set I think I had to reread it a a couple times I think this is an A as well oh exactly the card's nuts the card's actually insane I'll give it an A solid okay uh, next up we have Kodama of the East Tree so there's been many Kadamas in the past, all from uh, Kamigawa block. But this is its most recent incarnation, and it is uh, six mana, four and two green, for a six six with reach. Uh, and the text says, whenever another permanent enters the battlefield under your control, if it wasn't put onto the battlefield with this ability, you may put a permanent card with equal or lesser converted mana cost from your hand onto the battlefield. Um, if you cast this. So let's just assume that this is in play now, right? Because it says whenever another permanent enters a battlefield and you play like a three mana creature, you can put a land into play or you can put a two mana creature into play. Like, I think that's a decent effect. Yeah. What do you think, Jordan? I think there's, uh, there's probably, I, I'm not very good at putting together like combos on the fly, but I think there's like a, probably a way to abuse this if you have like, Safi and like a renegade or allier and like an imperial recruiter or something or yeah. like a or a recruiter of the guard so you could like you oh know, yeah that sounds pretty cool like too. sack Safi to you know return your recruiter and then get 
get it like sack him and then you get him and Safi back and then you get to put a whole bunch of stuff into a play and like I'm, I'm not 100 percent sure but i feel like there's a cool combo deck that could like be there like a hard b minus c plus territory card i'd go with, yeah i'd go with a b minus too i think yeah i'll be b minus too it sounds about right natural order this is not however Ooh. it has the same mana cost and same effect so uh magus the order is a uh three three four two and two green uh, it's a human wizard that says, uh, pay a green, tap it, and sacrifice Megas of the Order and another green creature and search your library for a green creature card, put it onto the battlefield, and shuffle your library. So this is just an additional natural order, really. I mean, with with additional steps, right, with extra steps. Um, yeah. <laughs> but if you're starved for natural order effects, I don't see why you wouldn't play this. I really wish that... Um... It could sacrifice itself. I think that's what's holding it back. Well, it does sacrifice itself and another green creature. Well, yeah, yeah, but like it needs two creatures to turn in, into a big one. Yes. Yeah, I'm not like super in love with it. I I've always had problems with the Mega Cycle because they're creatures and they you have to wait a turn to activate them and they're like yeah. so vulnerable. And uh, yeah, I, I just I I can't really get behind this card i i think even if you're starving for a natural order effect there's better things you could, could be playing i think it's a b just flat b no no minus no plus just b uh i i'm in like a b minus there's there's a lot more things i'd rather play a c plus it's just like why not play natural order basically all right jordan you you're really gonna need to take the reins on this one you've got this all figured out uh the next card is reshape the earth okay so for uh, nine mana, six and three green, you get a sorcery. Search your library for up to 10 land cards, put them on the battlefield tap, then shuffle your library. I know I looked at this card and went, this is a stupid commander card too. But then I really thought about it. And I think within the, the four color scape shift shell in like Highlander decks, you, you already play intuition and gifts ungiven. And there's like a cool chain you could add with only like one additional card. So if you intuition, you can get reshape the earth, um, uh, like a snapcaster or some other way to recur this from or recur a spell from the graveyard, and uh, oh. um, Mizix's mastery. And then it doesn't really oh, it doesn't really matter what they give you because then you can you can cast this. From the graveyard for four mana um and then if you gifts ungiven you have to get the same three cards but you have to get faithless looting to because if they give you reshape the earth and something else you're you're yeah. in trouble uh but yeah like this is a pretty easy way like early game like you don't have to wait till you have seven lands to scape shift or even if you are just playing blue green you could do something similar with like field of the dead and just get like yeah. 10 zombies or 11 zombies however that works so like i i think this card has a lot of potential but you you don't want to be casting it for nine yeah you don't want to pay retail for this like ever but you no. could if you could in a scape shift deck you could yeah up to nine and then cast this yeah for sure this is a card that it doesn't fit in one specific deck necessarily but you have to want to do this. And I think the same goes for every other nine mana mythic sorcery in the set too. Yeah. True. Right? It's like you want, if you're playing this card, you want like it is integral to your game plan or secondary to your game plan that, that you do this, right. That you put lands into play uh, 10 at a time, or that you cast three spells from your graveyard or something, you know, like just, if you're not, committed to this do not play this card and for that reason i'll give it a b i'll give it a b too i think that's just fair i'm an, i'm on b plus all right let's move on to our next green card uh next we have sweet gum recluse uh so i am i'm not a huge fan of spiders so hey, me too <laughs> this this card kind of gives me the willies a little bit uh, but for four and two green uh, you get a a spider with flash <laughs> my worst nightmare and cascade yeah. uh as well as reach so when sweet gum recluse enters the battlefield you put three counters 
on each of any number of target creatures that enter the battlefield this turn. And why this is interesting is, while it's a 0-3, you can put the three counters on itself, but you can also put three counters on the creature that it, it cascades into. And on the off chance you cascade into like an arachnogenesis, then, well, you're off to the races. If you're playing something that is kind of salty in colors that you can kind of afford to go a little higher on the mana cost with, this card kind of goes into it. It operates really well as a finisher in a shell like that too. Like while it is a 3-6, it does have reach and it can just, you know, block everything. We're just going to operate under the pretense that this is a 3-6, that you are going to opt to put the counters on it yeah. as well as whatever else enter the battlefield this turn. So I think this card's pretty good. I, uh, I I really like this too. I think it's another one of these like soft, like uncounterable is not really the right word, but like value even if it gets countered control kind of. nightmares yeah so you like you get to flash this in on end step and like usually that's when they don't want to counter stuff you you get to cascade as well and if they don't counter this and they want to counter your other thing you still get a three six out of it and and you get to untap but like mm -hmm. i just all i want in the world is i want to cascade this into like ishkana oh oh no <laughs> then you make five spiders and they're all like Four, four, four fives, and, and then you untap and you drain them. Yeah, and yeah. then like attack for like a million. Like, but yeah, I like it. Like, I like it a lot. Julian, what are you thinking? Uh, um, um, I'm gonna give it an F on the pretense that <laughs> please nobody play this against me. But um, but in all seriousness, I think I will give it about a B. I'm just gonna play this against you, Julian, and just throw plastic spiders while I do Please it. Please don't. Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm doing free altars. I'll turn this into like I'll turn it into like double bubble pink, like a sweet <laughs> sweet gum recluse. <laughs> Disgusting. <laughs> Please don't do that. <laughs> That's some sweet gum you got there. Yeah, I think this is yet another solid B, if not A minus. That's everything we wanted to look at in part two. We've got some pretty good contenders here for a lot of different Highlander decks. Let us know if there are any cards we didn't review that you would have expected us to review, and uh, if we were a little too optimistic or pessimistic on any of our ratings. We'll be back for Gold and Colorless soon enough, but until then, goodbye.